Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to do an example of an integral that requires trigonometric substitution. So the problem is to integrate the function x cubed times the square root of 4 plus x squared dx. The trigonometric substitution is going to be let x equal 2 times the tangent of theta. Now where does this come from? If we look at the equation sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 and divide this through by cosine squared, we get another maybe slightly less familiar Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So if I divide each term here by cosine squared, I get the terms that you see there. Now we can take this equation and multiply both sides by 4, and I'm going to switch the order of these two. 4 plus 4 tangent squared theta is equal to 4 secant squared theta. Now if you look at our problem, we have 4 plus x squared, and it's under a square root. So if that x squared, if that x squared, if we said that was 4 tangent squared theta, which would be the same as saying x equals 2 tangent theta, then this would be a perfect square because it would be equal to 4 secant squared theta. We can take the square root of 4 secant squared theta. So the idea is to make a trigonometric substitution so that the quantity under the square root becomes a perfect square. And in this particular example, the choice of x will be x equals 2 times the tangent of theta. And again, looking at this identity here, is the key, and actually multiplying it by 4 is a, a nice little step so that we can see the, the 4 there instead of a 1 here. There's a 4 multiplying by 4. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we use this substitution. The original integral, x cubed times the square root of 4 plus x squared dx, we will let x equal 2 times the tangent of theta, and so we need to figure out what dx will equal as well. So the differential will be 2 times the derivative of uh, tangent is secant squared theta. And then the differential will be dx equals 2 secant squared theta d theta. So now we'll plug these into the problem. So the integral becomes x cubed is 2 tangent theta cubed. And then we have the square root of 4 plus x squared x squared is 2 tangent theta squared, and then dx is 2 secant squared theta d theta. And this is going to simplify very nicely. The square root is going to go away thanks to the identity. So this is equal to, 2 is going to get cubed, that's 8, and then there's another 2 there that's going to make 16 integral of tangent cubed, and I'll write the secant squared next, and now let's deal with the square root. Square root of 4 plus squaring 2 tangent theta gives us 4 tangent squared theta, and then we have our d theta at the back. Now take a good look under that square root, 4 plus 4 tangent squared theta. Our identity says 4 plus 4 tangent squared theta is equal to 4 times the secant squared theta. So we're going to put that in. So we have 16 integral tangent cubed theta secant squared theta square root of 4 secant squared theta d theta. So using the identity. This is a major step. This is the reason that we made the choice that we did at the beginning. <clears throat> because here we can, this is easy now, we can take the square root of 4, it's 2, of secant squared, it'll give us secant. So we'll have 32 here because a 2 is coming out of the square root. We have tangent cubed theta, and a secant is coming out, we already had two of them, so join the fun, secant cubed. <clears throat> now we get a 
slightly tricky trigonometric integral. But notice, first and foremost, we have transformed the problem from an integral in x involving a square root to a trigonometric integral. So with a little bit of study of trigonometric integrals, you recognize that when you're dealing with an odd power of the tangent in conjunction with secants, then we can do a substitution, let u equal the secant of theta, and du equal secant of theta tangent of theta d theta. This isn't exactly obvious, but if you study trigonometric integrals, then this is a pattern that comes up, and this is the method for solving it. Let's see how it works. <clears throat> this is the substitution we're going to head towards, uh, but in the form that it's in, it's not clear that that substitution is meaningful. The first thing we're going to do is, this du is secant theta tangent theta, so we're going to take a secant and a tangent off of each of these. So we're going to have tangent squared, secant squared, and then move over a secant and a tangent. So this secant tangent d theta, that's going to become du. So that's the point of putting that off to the side there. And now, this tangent squared is no good. We would like our function here to just have secants in it. So the secant squared is nice, the tangent squared not so nice. But it's not so bad either because the tangent squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So back to that same identity by coincidence. Secant squared theta minus 1 times secant squared theta times secant theta tangent theta d theta. So there's our integral. Now maybe you can see that a u substitution will work. If u is the secant, then we're going to get some u's here and du at the back. So let's continue with the computation. Doing the substitution, it's u squared minus 1. There's a 32 in the front. 32 integral u squared minus 1 times u squared du. A nice polynomial integral in u. Finally, we will be able to integrate. Actually, one more step. Simplify this polynomial. It is u to the fourth minus u squared. Now we can integrate, finally. A lot of work manipulating the integrand into completely different forms. First, a form in x involving a radical, then a trigonometric form, and now, finally, a simple polynomial form. And this one we can integrate u to the fifth over 5 minus u to the third over 3 plus c. So that's essentially our answer. The problem with this is it's in the wrong variable. We would like a function of x, which has this integrand as its derivative. So we need to unravel this from u back to theta using the fact that u was equal to the secant of theta. And then from theta back to x somehow using the fact that x and theta are related in the initial substitution equation. <clears throat> So what we have then, first, this is 32, we put in the secant. It's secant to the fifth theta over 5 uh, minus secant to the third of theta over 3 plus c. Again, u was equal to the secant of theta, so we just swap those back. Now this is where it gets tricky, actually. Maybe I, I shouldn't write that equals quite yet. The original substitution equation was x equals 2 tangent theta. So let's rewrite that as tangent of theta is equal to x over 2. And we would like to know then, what is the secant of theta? And to answer that, we can do a little bit of trigonometry. The tangent of theta is x over 2, so that's the opposite over the adjacent. And the secant of theta, that's the reciprocal of the cosine, so it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. The adjacent is 2. The hypotenuse, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of 4 plus x squared. Not coincidentally, the square root that was in the problem. So, 
that's the adjacent was the denominator, so it's the square root of 4 plus x squared over 2. That's the secant of theta. So we're going to take that and we're going to plug it in for secant of theta in those two places. And that will be our final answer. Let's see if we can scratch that out. So our final answer here is equal to 32 times the square root of 4 plus x squared over 2, quantity to the fifth, over 5, minus the square root of 4 plus x squared over 2, quantity cubed, over 3, plus c. So there's our secant to the fifth over 5, that's a 5 minus the secant cubed over 3. Uh, so this is a little bit annoying, but fortunately we're going to have some powers of 2 here multiplied by a power of 2. Things are going to cancel. So we're going to get this. Uh, 32, well let's see, the 32 gets distributed. 2 to the fifth is 32, so that's going to just disappear. We get the square root of 4 plus x squared to the fifth over 5 minus the 32 gets distributed here also. Now, in the denominator of the numerator, there's 2 cubed, which is 8. So 32 times 1 over 8 is 4. And then we have the square root of 4 plus x squared cubed and over 3 plus c. And that's, that's the answer, although uh, we could maybe make it look a little nicer. I don't know if you'll agree. It's 4 plus x squared to the power 5 halves minus 4 thirds times 4 plus x squared to the power 3 halves, if you wanted to use the rational exponent. Since here we're combining the radical symbol with the power, it's a little nicer maybe to write the rational exponent. Okay, so there's our answer. If you were to take the derivative of this function, if you were to just suppose, then you would get this. So we have anti-differentiated correctly, if that were the case. That's how you could check. Okay, thank you for watching.